that He says comes before the glory. My message today is called the suffering and the glory. Now let's lay it down right here at the beginning. This morning's sermon is a hard message. There's hope in it. You've got to see that. There's hope in it. But it's hard. I mean, these are brutal words in a way. One thing... And don't. Are you guys like me in this sense? I hate hearing preaching or teaching when I walk away and I think, you know, I just can't even see how that fits into my life. I can't see what that has to do with me. One thing about Paul is the guy is practical. I mean, he's not into dry, irrelevant theology. He's practical and pastoral, and he's real. Don't you want reality in the preaching? And come on, we live lives. This book isn't just for the shelf, folks. I mean, we, we need to be able to look in here and have this thing hit us right where we're at in this life. I mean, I want somebody that's going to come to where I am and tell me the truth about why my life is the way it is, why this world is the way it is, and to, and to give me some hope in the midst of that. I guess not, not everybody wants that. Kenny and I were talking with a woman at Sutton Holmes last night. Tried to share some truth with her. She stormed off without the burger, so she must have been offended. Not everybody wants the truth. But Paul, he's here. And he wants to give it to us. I mean, folks, we need a gospel that hits us right where we are. Where we live. Now look, what Paul's doing here is he's hitting us where we live. He's being prophetic. He knows... Now, Christian, listen to me here. Paul knows that right now there is a crisis coming down the pike toward you that will tempt you to quit the Christian life. Things that will tempt you to think that God doesn't love you and doesn't care. They're coming. Look, Child of God, you will suffer. You must suffer with Christ. And you will not have an inheritance if you run from the suffering. Christian, there is suffering in your future. If it's not already on your plate already. We have a young church. Definitely not beyond suffering. But we're young. We tend to be Healthy. But I'll tell you this, how likely it is that as we age, as the years go by, our sufferings are going to be greatly multiplied. And Paul sets himself to prepare you. You that sit there right now, he's speaking to you. This isn't just some preaching to go over your head. Something for you to miss. He's speaking to you. You know what He's doing here? He's preparing you for the day that crisis comes. And it's coming. You, Every one of you in this room are going to get so sick or you are going to have such a tragic accident that you are going to die. And before that, you are going to suffer things. You are going to suffer losses. You are going to suffer the death of loved ones. Look, every married couple in here, unless you're in a tragic accident together, one of you is going to lose the spouse and go on to live with that. We are headed for things, folks. I remember my grandmother crying when my Aunt Barb died. And she said a mother should not have to see the death of her daughter. But I'll tell you what, some of you are going to see that. Some of you are going to be hit by such despair and by such crisis. And what Paul is equipping us to do is preparing us that when it does come, you won't say, I give up. I can't do this anymore. I'm out of here. He's preparing us. Kenny and I were walking the other night 
walking and praying and talking about where the church has come in seven years. What we've seen. And then we, we, what it led to was us contemplating what, you know, what might the next seven or eight years bring? What might they bring? We were thinking of, you know, what people might be saved, what missionaries might be sent, what gospel advances there might be, what changes. But I'll tell you what, in all this, I could not help thinking about what suffering is likely to occur among us. What death, what tragedy, what loss, what disappointments, what persecution, what temptations. What one of you brothers or sisters is going to defect and walk away in the next seven years? Which one of us is going to lose a child soon? either to death or to the darkness of this world. And it's coming. It's coming. It's coming. My sister can hold her child in her arms and hold her close. But death is going to tear that child out of some of our arms. And sickness and calamity, and fire, and that phone call, you know it's coming, I can remember the phone call came, son, I've got cancer. The phone call came, Tim, your grandpa's dead. The phone call's coming, folks. The phone is going to ring. There's unknown trials and tribulations. In the next seven years, eight years of this church, and they're coming. Maybe some of this causes you to think, why is he being so negative? I don't like to think about these things. But hear me, that's not even the question right now. I'm not asking you whether or not you like to think about these. Paul's putting them out there. He's the one talking suffering, not me. I mean, I am, but it's because he is. And it's because I want to be biblical. And I want to draw on his words here. Paul is forcing us to think about these things. He lays it out. Romans 8.18 You see, folks, when the suffering comes, Paul wants us to be able to say what he says. Romans 8.18 This is what you need to be able to say when the despair is bringing you down and it's crushing you. You need to be able to say this with Paul. I consider 